Hi guys, this is Asal. I'm studying for the bar and I wanted to review my notes with you. So today I'm studying evidence and I'm studying the physician-patient privilege. So it's actually a pretty simple rule. The physician-patient privilege has two types. There's the doctor-patient privilege, which is for physical conditions, and there's the psychotherapist-patient privilege, which is for mental conditions and emotional conditions. So the, the rule here says that it comes out of the Jeffy. It says that we hope that confidential com communication between a licensed psychotherapist and her patient is protected from compelled disclosure. So the information is protected. It has the three elements. The first element is confidential communication. The second element is between a psychotherapist and the patient. And the third element is for diagnosis or treatment. So what you want to do here, you want to break this down. You want to talk about confidential confidentiality and what it means to have a confidential information. And also you want to talk about communication and what it means to communicate a confidential information. And then the next thing you would like to talk about is what it means between a psychotherapist and a patient. So who is a psychotherapist exactly? It is any person that is authorized and has authorized or reasonably believed, also licensed or certified psychologist or licensed clinical social worker. So it can be any of the three. It is not necessarily like a psychologist only. It could be authorized or reasonably believed second one licensed or certified psychologist and then the third one licensed clinical social worker so it could be any of the three and a patient is any person who's basically consulting and being examined or interviewed any person being interviewed that's a patient and what do i mean for a diagnosis or for treatment so it basically has to be to treat a mental condition or a physical condition that's what I mean for diagnosis and treatment. And then the next thing I would like to talk about are the assertions and the waivers. How do you assert and how do you waive a privilege? So privilege is asserted by, for patient, and the communication may not be disclosed. And also privilege is waived by or for the patient and communications may not be disclosed. Okay, and then the next thing I would like to talk about are the exceptions. So there's three exceptions here, exceptions to the psychotherapist privilege. The first one is a dangerous patient. The second one is a claim or defense. And then the third one is a crime fraud. Okay, this is all I said. I said dangerous patient, claim or defense, and crime fraud, but that's not enough explanation. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. So what do I mean by a dangerous patient? I mean, let's say that someone goes to his doctor and he says that, oh, I plan to kill my ex-girlfriend next week. So when he says that, that he's planning to kill his ex-girlfriend next week, then that's a dangerous patient over there. And at this point, the psychotherapist has to warn. And then the next thing is when you're using that and you're using it in your claim or defenses. What do I mean by that? For example, let's say in an insanity defense, you need to use it, the psychotherapist privilege. So when you're using it, there's an exception there. And finally, it is the crime fraud. What do I mean by crime fraud? This happens where people go to their psychotherapist and they're trying to figure out a way to commit a crime and a fraud. So when that happens, there's an exception here and the psychotherapist can tell someone and then lastly that's pretty much everything i wanted to say all i wanted to say is this privilege is to promote a physician patient relationship that's all there is to it we want to have a comfortable flow of information and also remember the difference between doctors and psychotherapists and what it means to have a psychotherapist patient privilege those three elements, confidential communication between psychotherapist and patient for diagnosis or treatment. 
that's all there is to this rule. So I really hope you enjoy studying. Good luck.